But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And there's our verse we read tonight. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Pray. Have you ever been so... Have you ever had a, a, a flu or a stomach virus that was hard to even pray? That's what, that, that's what this... this opposite of pieces that comes into our heart sometimes. Anxiety comes on us. We can't even pray. But you have to be like, like David. You have to, you know, David said, I am among those whose teeth are set on edge. I am amongst lions. But then he says, but my heart is fixed, O oh God. I will sing and give praise unto God. We have to just cry out to God. Help me. Sometimes the best prayer is just to say, help me. God, help me. Because he says he's a very present help in the time of need. God, deliver me. And that leads us to praise and worship. You know, if Paul talked about being filled with the Spirit. He said, uh, be not drunk with wine where is it excess, but rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then he's going to say, uh, singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and making melody in your heart unto the Lord. Never discount praise and worship. Open up. Lift up your voice and just worship him. You know, as I read through the Psalms, these were guys that could belt it out. They had a song about everything. They had a psalm about everything. I tell them it work. I sing it work. It's the only way that I can continue to function. But in between calls, I'll sing a line or two of something. Usually it's Sinatra because my voice is just like his. Do you know that? But, uh, or Perry Como. There was a, a take I told you, this crossword puzzle, four letter word uh, was the hint, was the answer, and it was Singer Como. And I said to somebody in the break room, one, 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 this crossword puzzle is wrong, Perry does not fit in here. And they said to me, David's Katie, Katie Perry. I didn't know it was a Katie Perry. I guess, is that her name, Katie Perry? You don't know her either, thank God. Yes, it's Katie Perry. Katie Perry. <laughs> if it would have been, uh, four letter word, Gaither, I'd have got that right away. You know, been right on the spot. But to sing and lift up, you know, when we worship, it lifts up our spirits. Isaiah prophesied about Jesus, said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. And is your heart broke? He can bind your broken heart. To proclaim liberty to captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound. Are you bound in your spirit at times? Are you bound by whether it's depression or just having the blues or just not thinking well of yourself? He says to preach or to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. There are people, listen, never rush anybody in the mourning process. Everybody mourns at different times stages and different paces, but it's a real hurt. And I used to say years ago, I used to teach Wednesday night Bible studies how to behave at a viewing and a funeral. You know why? I get so tired of picking up the pieces after some Christians went to visit people that were grieving over their dead loved one. I used to tell them some of the dumbest things were said at the uh, head of a casket. You have to be sensitive. I, I, some of you, maybe someday we'll teach some of that. You've got to be sensitive. You know, I've, had, I've heard people say, what are you crying for? You know he's in heaven. You know, people, when my mother died, people said to me, David, you need to stop and think about where she is. I said, I already have. I have no problem with where she is. My problem is, she ain't here. That's where my heart is. And my heart aches. But he will comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Prayer, worship, this is what helps us to maintain ourselves in this, this peace that he has appropriated for us. And then finally, what helps us maintain that or sustain that peace is not just prayer and praise and worship, but it's focus. 
focus. I have a friend of mine uh, who fought in Vietnam, and he, in fact, he's coming here in a couple Tuesdays to, to speak, but he took, uh, he was injured, he was wounded from a grenade mortar fire that went off close by him that killed a friend of his next to him and wounded him. And some other things that he went through in Vietnam. He came home from Vietnam and went to Bible school. And while he was in Bible school, he was pastoring his church. And he was in the basement of the church in the little office one afternoon studying, getting ready for Sunday morning. And guess what happened to him? He began to hear mortar fire in the parking lot of the church. And he went outside. And there was nothing there. Yet he could smell and hear and feel the percussion of mortar fire going off all around him. And for the next several years, he suffered from flashbacks. He suffered, and we never want to make light of this. We, I know sometimes these terms are overused, but he suffered from post-traumatic syndrome disorder. He wrote a book. They used to say about the guys in Vietnam that came home. You know, World War I, it was uh, you know, shell shock. World War II, they called it battle fatigue. Vietnam, they called it post-traumatic. But he wrote a book. The guys that came home from Vietnam, some of them that suffered these things, the other vets would say, well, he's home. But he's not all the way home yet. And he wrote a book called All the Way Home. How that God helped him and the grace of God, understanding God's love and God's <coughs> grace. And I recently saw, yesterday I think it was, kind of ironic, he posted that during those years that he suffered so much from this. His wife helped him so much, but what he would do is he would, he would stay focused on the things of God. He would, when these thoughts would come into his mind, he would try to dismiss them. In Isaiah, six, or Isaiah 26, verse 3, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. And Paul said in Philippians, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are honest, or have a good report, what did Paul say? Think on these things. That's also in Philippians chapter 4 that deals with peace. Think on these things. Think on the things of God. When I was a little boy, I should say young boy, I don't know that I was ever really little, but when I was a young boy, we used to sing this song. We went to the EUB church. Later they merged with the Methodists, became the United Methodists. EUB, Evangelical United Brethren. It was funny, when we were kids, we used to say that we went to church at the Ugly Brothers. That's what we used to call ourselves. <laughs> but we used to sing this song. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. For there's a Savior up above. Who's looking down with love? So be careful, little eyes, what you see. And be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For there's a Savior up above. Who's looking down with love? So be careful, little Here's the one I always got in trouble with. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Savior up above, who's looking down with love? So be careful, little mouth, what you say. I don't want you to think I'm a preacher that's saying accentuate the positive, but at the same time, I will tell you, put away negative thoughts. Keep negative things out of your mind. Keep negative people away from you. Sometimes even your Christian brother can be negative. I knew one, one preacher at one stretch of his life. You know, he, could, he could have discouraged the Apostle Paul. I'm, I'm sure of it. You know, he always had, yeah, but, yeah, but they could have done this. You have to be careful. Don't let that get into your spirit. Don't listen to what the world is saying. Listen to what Jesus is saying. If you think that you need to be a well-rounded person and you need to listen to the philosophies of this world, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. Be careful what you let into your spirit. Speak the word of God. 
If you're going through these things, speak the word of God over yourself. These are not magic uh, mumbo jumbo. What, what's the magicians? What do they say? Abraham or something? Abraham. It's not that. But you're feeding your spirit. You're feeding your soul. Think on these things. Let the peace that Jesus has, has suffered for for you, let that be settled into your heart and into your mind. I've had this, uh, two songs I've had on my mind recently. The one that Sandy played here this evening, uh, He is Our Peace. And then there's another one, Peace, Peace, Wonderful Peace. Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever I pray. In fathomless Sandy, if you come to the piano for a few moments this evening, I have no idea. Maybe there's no one suffering from that tonight. Maybe no one's battling that. Uh, this anxiety that sometimes I battle is like a mean dog in the neighborhood that occasionally decides to come into my yard. He don't live there all the time. But I'll tell you, he comes around once in a while. Why is that? Because in this life you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Peace. Peace. Please stand with me tonight. Hallelujah.